Well, a Merry Christmas to you and your loved ones. You're welcome to this Christmas Day sermon coming to you from Villiersdorp Community Church in South Africa. My name is Peter de Villiers. In the description below, you'll find my email address and other links and info. Feel free to use them. I'm going to pray and then I'll be reading from Luke chapter 1 from verse 5. So let me pray. Lord Jesus, we praise you and we thank you for your willingness to come and live amongst such as us. Thank you for your willingness to become nothing for our sake. I pray, Holy Spirit, that, that as you came over John the Baptist, even before he was born, and as you came over Elizabeth, that, that you would fill us and help us understand what it means to have faith in Jesus, whose, whose birth we celebrate today. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. Amen. Well, Luke chapter 1 from verse 5. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless, because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, But how can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he'd seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. 
you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfil his promises to her. Well, two weeks ago, tomorrow two weeks ago, we looked at the birth of Jesus as something that transcends time and space. That was the message titled The Christmas Track. A week ago, tomorrow a week ago, we looked at the birth of Jesus as something that took place in time and space. And the verses we read today, we're at the meeting place between these two. Today, today we're looking at how are we to relate to Jesus whose birth we are celebrating today. So let's look at the events that took place in the verses we read. And that's my first point, is these verses. So we have events that certainly took place in time and space in the history of this world. But at the same time, we have events that took place in ways that, that are not the norm. I mean, that's putting it mildly. These events were clearly supernatural. I mean, can you imagine an angel appearing? Well, that's what happened to the priest Zechariah and also to the young girl Mary. Clearly, this was out of this world. Both Zechariah and Mary received a similar message from the angel. Zechariah was told that his wife Elizabeth was barren, would become pregnant. But because Zechariah questioned the possibility of this, or rather he was assured of the impossibility of this, he became deaf and mute. And, lo and behold, the barren Elizabeth became pregnant. And then in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, we have the angel appearing to Mary, who was a virgin. And she also questioned how she could become pregnant. And the angel told her that God will keep his promises. And just as the impossible has happened, and Elizabeth, in her old age, was in her sixth month of pregnancy, so too it will happen to you. And Mary accepted this, and, and then she responds by packing her bags and being on her way to go and visit Elizabeth. I mean, they had a supernatural pregnancy in common. And then arriving at Elizabeth's front door, the, the supernatural events continue. Mary enters the house and she says, Hello there! And upon hearing Mary's greeting, the baby in Elizabeth's womb leapt. And this baby was to be called John the Baptist who would be a prophet who was sent to prepare the way for the birth of Jesus, the Messiah. 
In verse 15 of this chapter, we see that John would be filled with the Holy Spirit before his birth. So with this response, we, we could say that, that this leap from John was his first prophecy. Later on in John chapter 3 verse 29, John compared his joy in announcing the coming of Jesus with that of a friend of a bridegroom at his wedding. Now John put it like this. He said, the friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. The second person to respond to Mary's arrival was Elizabeth. So we see that Elizabeth was also filled with the Holy Spirit and Prompted by the Holy Spirit, she then addresses Mary. Verse 42. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? The angel had told Mary the following, You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. They will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over David's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. So with the response, Elizabeth is confirming what the angel had told Mary by, by addressing Mary as the mother of my Lord. Now, this must have been a great encouragement to Mary. In, in the culture of the day, what she would have been facing was enormous. I mean, she was probably just only a teenager in, um, by her age, and now she was going to be pregnant while not married. And we can surely understand that no one in their right mind would have believed that, that she was pregnant and yet a virgin. After hearing this unsettling news, she rushed to Elizabeth. And without even explaining a dilemma, here was Elizabeth not only understanding what was happening to her, but, but confirming the truth that she was indeed carrying the Lord and Messiah in her womb. And we see Elizabeth celebrating Mary's faith. And we also hear Elizabeth giving a bit of a sting in verse 45, where she alludes to Zechariah's unbelief. She says, Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. I said at the beginning that, that we'll be looking at how we are to relate to Jesus whose birth we are celebrating today. I want to look at this by, by looking at Mary's faith. So what did Mary's faith look like? She taking Mary's faith as a model for what faith should look like, it's clear that, that faith in Jesus is about more than just celebrating Jesus' birth today and, and then tomorrow just getting on with life as, he, as if nothing much has happened. Looking at Mary's faith, we can see a progression. Firstly, Mary believed what the angel Gabriel told her. And despite an immediate response of being troubled, when the angel then laid out what God's plan was with her, she believed him. Secondly, after taking the angel at his word, Mary submitted herself to the Lord as Lord of her life. She said in verse 38, I am the Lord's servant. And thirdly, she entrusted herself to God by allowing him to do with her and through her what he had planned. She said, may your word to me be fulfilled. You know, we get the sense that, that she resigns herself to what God was doing. In other words, there's a sense of passivity on her side. I mean, God is the one who is working here. 
and then fourthly the passivity is replaced by activity she gets up and hurries to elizabeth see after being informed by the angel that both she and elizabeth were part of a supernatural conception she sought out the one person who could understand her and give her the encouragement and the support that she needed now we can summarize mary's faith with four words belief submission trust and action and especially now on christmas day i believe it could be good if if we compared our faith with that of mary so let's look at our faith and let's look at the four words that summarize mary's faith first of all belief so firstly there's the question of what we believe and i'm sure we can say that that the fact that we are gathered around the road lord's word on christmas day is is proof of our belief in the birth of jesus and that may be true but even before we can get to the other steps in the progression of faith we have to ask but what do we believe about jesus who was born and as we've seen for two weeks now it, it's about much more than simply the fact of the birth of a baby filled with the holy spirit elizabeth called the baby that was to be born of mary she called him my lord and referring to the baby that she would be expecting the the angel told mary he will be great and will be called the son of the most high the lord god will give him the throne of his father david and he will reign over jacob's descendants forever his kingdom will never end so the question is not whether we believe in the simple fact of the birth of Jesus. Let me ask it like this. Are the supernatural events that are described here a problem in really believing that this happened? So do we believe without any doubt that Jesus, who was born of the Virgin Mary, is God? And do we believe without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus died on the cross and that this death that he died was for our sins? And do we believe that the death that Jesus died is the punishment that we deserve for our own personal sin? And do we believe that because of God's love and grace, Jesus died in our place? that he paid for our sins with his blood and do we believe that after really dying jesus was physically resurrected and is alive and do we believe that he ascended to heaven and that he is seated at the right hand of god the father do you believe that you are a sinner and that your only hope for a restored relationship with god is in jesus christ do we believe that and then secondly we get to submission so the question here is have you abdicated the throne of your life have you declared the lord jesus to be lord of your life and then thirdly we get to to trust have you entrusted yourself to god believing that he is working in time and in space in your life and through your life furthermore if you believe that jesus died for your sins thereby earning for you god's forgiveness then do you believe that there's nothing that you can do to improve your standing with god it's all about what jesus has done and do you trust in and rest in the finished work of Jesus on your behalf? And then lastly, we get to action. I mean, trusting in God for your salvation is, is passive. He did it all. Trusting in Jesus' deed of salvation means that, 
that nothing I can do can contribute to my salvation in any way. Yet, faith leads to action. Faith works. So the first thing that Mary did was, was rush off to Elizabeth. Why Elizabeth? Because this was the person who could encourage and support her. She linked up with someone who shared her faith and her hope and her experiences. And I'm sure Zachariah had learned his lesson and, and he also contributed to the support and encouragement of Mary. This encouragement and support came through fellowship amongst people who shared their beliefs and their hopes and their experiences. This went on for three months until Mary went home. See, this is how God provided the, the support structure that the young Mary needed. See, Mary's faith, no matter how great it was, may have failed her had it not been for the fellowship with Elizabeth and Zechariah. And the same applies to us. None of us have all the knowledge and the faith to be able to stand on our own. Jesus himself has given the support structure that we need to strengthen our faith. And he called this support structure his body or his church. Mary's rush to get to Elizabeth, to, to get to faith fellowship, is an example to us which, which shows the need of every believer to be part of a community of faith. We need to deliberately plant ourselves within fellowship with those who also believe God's word as we do. Those that believe that Jesus was born to die on our behalf. Those that live with the expectation of Jesus' return. Those that have submitted to Jesus as Lord in their lives. Those that trust in Jesus alone as the only hope for a restored relationship with God. Those who, who together as a body of believers heed Jesus' call on his followers to be active in making disciples for him of all nations. Is this what your faith looks like? If it is, great. But if you realize that, that your definition of faith is too narrow, then today, as we celebrate Jesus' birth, I, I want to invite you to take on this faith of Mary. Faith that, that believes in Jesus who was born and who died, but who now lives and who intercedes for us with his Father. Faith that is in submission to Jesus as Lord. Faith that trusts in Jesus as our only hope. And faith that leads to action. And action that starts by deliberately and actively being invested in the local body of Christ, his church. Let me pray. Lord Jesus. When we think about our faith, we are reminded of the man who brought his son to you. And you said to him, everything is possible for one who believes. We want to respond as he, as he did by saying, Jesus, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And especially as we head toward 2022, we need faith. Faith like the faith of Mary. Help us, Lord, never to doubt that you are in control. Help us never to doubt that everything is possible in your hands. Help us never to doubt that you are busy unfolding your continuing plan of salvation in this world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this may surprise you, but as a song for today, I'm not suggesting a Christmas carol. As a declaration of our faith, I want to suggest the creed, as sung by Third Day and Brandon Heath. The link is in the description below, and there's an on-screen link uh, underneath um, this video screen.
my prayer for you is that this Christmas day would be a very special one. That it would be one in which you, you not only question your faith, but that your faith in Jesus would, 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 would be strengthened and that as you meet with loved ones, perhaps sharing a meal, that, that through you their faith would also be strengthened. I'll be back tomorrow, the 26th, for our Sunday morning sermon from Phileas Dock. Until then, God bless and goodbye.